In shitty downtown New York City, a rampaging supervillain is chasing our web-slinging superhero Spider-Man. Although Spider-Man dodges most of his attacks, the enemy nearly hits him, grazing most of his outfit. When the enemy threatens to destroy him, Spider-Man claims that his costume doesn't come easily and that it is hand-sewn. He catches Spider-Man off guard and free falls, to which Power Man arrives and catches him. Checking on the S.H.I.E.L.D. database, they discover their enemy is Arthur Parks, aka the Living Laser, a former Stark Industries employee from the Applied Sciences Division. According to their data, his physical form is made entirely of active photons. When they realize what they're facing, Living Laser grows in size and threatens to fry them up with his powers. Suddenly, a beam pierces the Living Laser, forcing it to disintegrate. While still trying to figure out what happened, Iron Man appears before them. Spider-Man starts fangirling at Iron Man while he talks to Fury. He tells the others how he was impressed at his genius, having built the armor himself, which he describes happened in a cave with paper clips and empty soda cans. With it, he broke free from his captors and became an iconic hero. Fury criticizes Iron Man for being carefree, talking about his provocative social life when the Living Laser was one of his sparring partners. Iron Man brushes him off and claims he has other shit to do. When Fury implies taking responsibility, Iron Man claims that Living Laser quickly fled when he saw him coming. He explains that Living Laser will be back, and when he does, he'll have developed a device to find and contain him. Spider-Man interrupts their conversation and claims they could trace the photon pattern which would be specific to him and unique in Spectrum. Iron Man was impressed by his genius idea, but ridiculed his poor fashion sense. When he tried to recruit Spider-Man, Fury claimed they didn't need his help. Despite Fury's objections, Iron Man asks Spider-Man to drop by Stark Industries for a wardrobe upgrade. That weekend, Spider-Man dropped by Stark Industries at Tony's invitation. Tony takes him on a tour of the place in what he claims to be the most highly classified section of the factory. Spider-Man starts drooling over the cool gadgets and devices he finds at the factory. Tony even showed him the prototype for the signal ratio accelerator, which he believes would revolutionize telecommunications as they know it. He also shows him the molecular disruption chamber which will scatter its target to multiple parallel dimensions. He then confronts Spider-Man about how Fury has been training him to bring him to his level, but Tony suggests he should aim higher, suggesting he ain't much of shit. When Spider-Man wondered how he knew about it, Tony smirked and explained that his company had built the helicarrier. Spider-Man was surprised that he and Fury worked together, but Tony explains that you don't necessarily get along with everyone you work with to which Spider-Man agrees. That said, Tony claims he had some free time to make him an armored suit, much to his excitement. Spider-Man receives an armored suit with Iron Man's technology and becomes an unstoppable force. Meanwhile, White Tiger and the others grow impatient when Spider-Man is late for training. They decide to continue without him, but when they start talking about changing leaders, he suddenly enters with his armored suit. Despite the flashy entrance, he cannot fully control it and destroys their training area. Later, the team confronts him when Spider-Man messes up their missions when he struggles to pilot his suit. Although they managed to defeat the enemy, he either causes friendly fire or causes more collateral damage every time he shows off his armored suit. They even complain to Fury about it, but when the living laser reappears on their scanners, Fury insists on leaving Spider-Man out of the mission. Spider-Man's team corners living laser in an alley and demands he surrender. Out of nowhere, Spider-Man arrives and declares himself to be the Iron Spider. He explains how he has Stark tech built into his armor that tells him where he'd be. When Power Man argues with him, Living Laser shoots and blows him against a wall. Living Laser suspects that Spider-Man must be Iron Man's sycophant as he reeks of Stark's arrogance. 
when Spider-Man tried to charge at him, he flew against a billboard instead, unable to control his suit's thrusters. Seeing Spider-Man make a mess, Nova tries to attack Living Laser, but is easily blown away instead. Furious, Nova attacks him with his powers, but it only makes him stronger because he is made of energy. Not only is he stronger, but he also manages to escape, dispersing himself into the area. His team then criticizes Spider-Man for yet again messing up the mission. As the others walk away from him, Spider-Man notices something is wrong with his suit and is acting on its own. When he does a diagnostic check, it reveals that Living Laser managed to infiltrate through the crack in his suit. Living Laser managed to control his suit, which he explains is quite easy as it runs on energy. He then controls Iron Spider and flies into the air. Meanwhile, Fury scolds Iron Man for being a dumbass, handing an armored suit to Spider-Man that he can barely control. Iron Man claims that after seeing the kid in action, he is sure he is doing well when Iron Spider suddenly bumps into him out of nowhere. Spider-Man explains that Living Laser has hijacked his suit, and Iron Man tells Parks he doesn't have the IQ to breach the armor's security. When they attack each other with repulsor beams, Iron Man has the advantage and pummels Living Laser in the air. He tells Spider-Man to bear with it as he tries to run down Living Laser's power. Living Laser threatens to scorch Spider-Man from the inside if Iron Man doesn't shut down his armor's high-level security functions. Unable to risk it, Iron Man quickly powers down his armor's security, to which Living Laser knocks him out with a punch. With Iron Man knocked out, Living Laser used this chance to infiltrate his armor. Living Laser then flies off in Iron Man's suit, with Spider-Man still dumbfounded over what happened. Spider-Man returns to their hideout, where the others find him tinkering with his armor. He explains that he is repairing, modifying, and upgrading his suit. Power Man claims they have heard about Iron Man for which Spider-Man feels responsible after Tony willingly surrenders himself to the enemy to save him. He argues that someone needs to save Iron Man, even if he has to do it alone. The others explain that despite making a huge mess, they are still in it together, even after a major screw-up. Power Man claims that they would never let him do it alone, and that they should act now before Fury can send in the cavalry. Spider-Man was moved that they would be willing to disobey orders, but White Tiger claims they couldn't disobey an order never given in the first place. In exchange for their help, she asks him to leave the armor behind, but Iron Fist claims that this time, he believes it wouldn't be like before, to which Spider-Man confirms. Meanwhile, the Living Laser breaks into Stark Industries and steals the schematics for several of Tony's ingenious inventions, despite A.I. Jarvis's warnings. He claims it would make him a lot of fortune selling Stark technology. Suddenly, the wall breaks down, later revealed to be the work of Iron Fist. Spider-Man's team confronts Living Laser, to which he taunts them, saying they stand no chance against Iron Man himself. When Living Laser asks them if they are willing to kill Stark for it, Spider-Man makes a flashy entrance through the ceiling. Living Laser quickly attacks Spider-Man, but he skillfully dodges it. When he attacks him with a repulsor beam, Spider-Man fights back with his own repulsor webbing. While the others distract Living Laser, Spider-Man checks Iron Man's armor for a way to wake him up when he comes across a security failsafe. Jarvis explains that the failsafe sends an electrical charge directly into Stark's brain, acting as his defibrillator for his entire nervous system. He doesn't recommend this option, but Spider-Man claims they have no options. With his team struggling to contain Living Laser, Spider-Man quickly requests remote activation codes downloaded to his suit. Living Laser takes full control of Iron Man and kicks Iron Fist away with his thrusters. He then fires everything at them, which they barely dodged. Spider-Man returns to the battlefield and activates the failsafe to wake Tony up. He then tells him to start up his armor's security, quickly purging Living Laser from his suit. 
Spider-Man suggests using the molecular disruption chamber that Tony showed him the other day to defeat Living Laser. That said, they then attacked him with repulsor beams, but not only was it ineffective, it even made him bigger. Living Laser claims they can't expect to defeat him with energy when he is made of it. He insists on getting Iron Man's suit back, explaining it as the key to controlling Stark Industries. That said, Iron Man taunts him to chase him to which he quickly exits through the ceiling, to which the Living Laser ferociously chases after. Once they have left, Spider-Man rallies his team, claiming to have a plan. Spider-Man talks to Iron Man and leads him to where he needs to be while luring the Living Laser into a trap. Iron Man tells him they are close and asks him to activate it once clear. Spider-Man starts to panic when he realizes he must manually activate it. Iron Man explains that his armor's onboards are still rebooting, so he would have to do it manually, to which the others support him. Iron Man quickly flew past the chamber, luring Living Laser inside, and signaled to Spider-Man as soon as he cleared it. Spider-Man explains that the device disrupted his photonic structure to expand across several dimensions where he could no longer maintain his physical form. When they wondered where he went, it was later revealed that he ended up in the Marvel Superhero Adventures universe. With Living Laser defeated, Iron Man noticed Spider-Man made adjustments to the armored suit he made for him, which, given Iron Man's expression, was displeased. Later, Spider-Man talks to his team and apologizes for the trouble he's caused them. Fury breaks up their discussion, who is displeased with them for their unauthorized excursion on Stark Industries. While the others walk out, Fury stops Spider-Man and shows him S.H.I.E.L.D.'s upgraded version of his armored suit. He claims this version is as good as it gets, and it quickly became compact as a backpack. Spider-Man quickly wanted to test it out and suggested wearing it to school. Fury refuses, claiming that he isn't ready for it yet and asks him to return it once he is done testing it. Thank you for watching. Check out these other videos, and make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time.